What's up guys, Michael Corsentino with my September 2018 lighting tutorial for Shutter Magazine and BehindTheShutter.com. I hope that you guys are getting your monthly issues of BehindTheShutter.com, Shutter Magazine. Uh, it is an awesome magazine jam-packed with all sorts of fantastic photography information that is going to take your photo game to the next level. So if you're not, definitely head over to BehindTheShutter.com and set yourself up with a subscription so every month you'll get a nice knowledge drop right on your front doorstep. All right, let's dig into this month's tutorial. This month I want to walk you guys step by step through one of my favorite ways to use accent lights. So I'm going to walk you step by step through how we got from the image on the left all the way to the image on the right. So let's start with our progression there. We're going to move from one light to four lights. So as you can see uh, on the left we've got a really broad quality of light. Uh, that's where we started and I'm going to walk you in step by step and we're going to talk about the light modifiers and the lights that we used in order to get the results that you're going to see here. So we started there, uh, oops, and we moved there. Uh, that was our next step where we used a grid to tighten up the light. And then our final image on the right is where we ended up. Okay, so let's look at how we got from place to place, from point to point. So let's turn this off and let's move here. Okay, so this was our first step. This was the, where I've started first. So, and this is always how I work, is I start with the key light and then assess from there and season to taste. So, because I say, as I like to say, everything follows the key light. So in this case, uh, we're using a Mola Demi Beauty Dish with a diffusion sock on the front of it. It's placed uh, above the camera and I will provide lighting diagrams later in the um, presentation so you can see exactly where all the lights are positioned relative to the model and the camera. Um, but we are using the Mola Demi Beauty Dish with the sock. I love using a beauty dish. It gives a really uh, beautiful quality of light for portraits uh, and you can season it. You can make it a little bit more specular. You can make it a little bit softer using the sock and, and kind of get find a nice middle ground between the two and that's kind of what you're looking at here. But you can see that it gives a very broad, even quality of light, which is great in some instances. As a matter of fact, next month I'm going to be doing a one light tutorial for you guys. Um, but I want to show you what you can do when you add a little bit more into the mix and how you can really take uh, a, a nice portrait and make it extraordinary. Um, so that's what we had. That's what that's our starting point. And then I, from there, I can sort of judge what I want to do next. So first of all, I'm, I know that I want to I want less light. There's a lot of light happening here and I want something a little bit more dramatic and a little bit more moody. So my first step is to modify the key light and kind of dial in the light just for that light. And you'll, as you'll see, I like to work one light at a time because it really allows you to accurately judge the contribution that each light is making as we go. So you'll see that as we move forward through this. Okay, so next step is to add in uh, to modify our key light. And by doing that, what, what, what I did was I removed the sock and I put in a 30 degree grid spot. And that really tightens up the light. You can see here that the fall off uh, outside the circle, the main circle of light is much more dramatic and rapid uh, compared to without. So here, let's just take a look at that. There's without the grid and there's with the grid, okay? So I had metered that light when we started the, the, using a handheld meter, a handheld flash meter at F16, all right? And I encourage you guys to incorporate uh, light meters into your work. It allows you to work really quickly and accurately, and I used it throughout this shoot, and I'll talk about some of the other area, um, some of the other ways that I used it. Um, okay, so uh, now when I put that grid on, in addition to tightening up the quality of light, what it also did, or the circle of light, and creating more fall off, it also reduced the amount of illumination falling on the subject. It probably took it down a full stop. It probably took it down to F11. I didn't meter it. I looked at it, and I knew, I kind of made a judgment call that that was a good place to start. And of course, I could always have turned it up later or remetered it, but it looked like it was going to be okay. And the reason that I knew that was it was a little moody, which is which is good. I knew that I was going to be adding additional lights to the picture, to the to the model's face, and that that would create additional illumination and it would balance things out. So when you're starting out, and I covered this in last month's uh, top 10 lighting mistakes, I believe, 
um, it's really easy to throw too much light at everything at your subject. And that's kind of where we were uh, when we started with this. This to me is too much light on the left, all right? So this looks more interesting to me, but it's still not right because it's a little too dark and it doesn't really have any separation and I'm not really satisfied with the look that I have there. So I need to add some additional lights in to really you know, mold it and sculpt it into the, image that I want. And that's what we're going to do. That's really what accent lights are all about. You're really creating different dimensions and planes of light, and that allows you to create a very sculptural kind of look. All right. So first step is adding in that grid spot onto our, into our beauty dish. And those are made by Honey Grids. Uh, they make grids that work with mullet uh, beauty dishes. Next thing that I'm going to do is add in my first accent light. And that is uh, on camera left, and it's a 500 watt second light, and it is an Ellen Chrome modified with an Ellen Chrome uh, 14 by 35 strip box, and that is going to give me illumination on the left side of the face, as you can see here. Now, what you're seeing here are, is only the contribution from two lights. You're seeing the key light which is not really positioned on the right. It's just there to illustrate what lights are being used right now. That light is actually above my camera position. Um, and then uh, camera left on the side of the model, uh, you can see I've got the Ellen Chrome 14 by 35 strip box. And I'll show you lighting diagrams later in this presentation, which will give you a much better idea of exactly where all the lights were positioned relative to the model and camera position and all of that. Okay, but so I'm working one light at a time, right? And that's really key. Uh, the key light is a static thing that's always going to be in play. So, uh, you know, I'm adding the accent lights as I go one at a time, right? So there you can see that. Next, we're going to add, we're going to turn that light off and we're going to add in the accent light on the right, on the right side of things. So when you're looking at these, you can see here what's happening with the light. You you can, um, you really, you want to make an assessment as you're looking at what's going on with the lights. And that's why we work one light at a time, because I'm judging things like what's happening, uh, what is the lighting doing to the model's face? Where is the light falling? Is it hitting his nose in a way that's unflattering? Is it creating separation between the background? Uh, is it giving me even, even enough coverage from top to bottom in the image. Uh, so by working one light at a time and shutting off the lights that you're not using, that, that you know, that are going to be part of the entire picture, like once you've seasoned one, once you've got one light dialed in, I like to turn it off and move on to the next light um, and then put all of them back on and then you're ready to make your final image, right? So that's kind of how I'm doing it. Now these lights, the accent lights, I also, I metered these um, to match the key light at f16. So they're both at f16. Uh, again, the key light uh, has been reduced. The illumination has been reduced by putting on that grid probably to about f11. Um, so that's okay. The side lights are f16 uh, and the key light is f11. Uh, and that gives me an, a nice balance. And there you can see both of the accent lights, both of the side lights contributing to the exposure. That's left and right. Um, and the key light. Okay, so we now we have three lights contributing to the exposure, right? And you can see how things are really starting to take shape. The image is really starting to, uh, you know, become very different looking than where we started out. It's not as flat. It's got a lot more dimension and a sculptural quality to it. Uh, you can see different planes and facets of the face more accurately than you could before. And that really is what this whole lighting technique is about. All right, so let's move on to our next step. The next thing that I wanted to do was add in a, an accent light on the hair, on the model's hair, because I wanted to create some additional separation. Uh, I would do this regardless of whether the uh, subject was blonde or brunette. It's just gonna really help you uh, create, again, a more sophisticated, layered, dimensional look to the portrait. Um, and I started off, uh, I put the pack all the way down to its lowest power setting, and it still was too bright. Okay, so what I did was then I added a Roscoe diffusion, a sheet of Roscoe diffusion vellum in front of the uh, reflector. I was using a Profoto 7-inch reflector, all right? And for this light, I worked intuitively. I just kind of dialed it in. Um, I powered it all the way down, uh, and then I could see that it was still too bright, so I put that uh, layer of vellum in front to knock it down even further, and this is kind of where we ended up. It wasn't dark enough. I still was getting way too much brightness, and it was getting blown out and clipping on my histogram, so the next thing that I did was add a layer of ND filter. This is Roscoe ND filter. 
Uh, they come in rolls and they come in packs, uh, uh, 12 by 12 packs. That I was using the 12 by 12 packs here. Uh, so I started off with one layer of that in addition to the diffusion uh, from the previous step. And you can see the result here. Still too bright for me, uh, too brassy looking, uh, too aggressive. So I added another layer of diffusion gel, uh, neutral density gel rather, and you can see the result here. Okay, so now I found my sweet spot. This I'm really happy with. Things are really starting to come together. We've got three accent lights, one on the left, one on the right, and one on the hair, and then we've got our key light. Okay, so again, just to put a finer point on it, the accent lights are F16. The key light was originally metered also at F16, but putting in the grid knocked it down probably to around F11, but that's okay uh, because uh, we have a nice, subtle, moody kind of look as a result of that. The light that's coming from the front from camera position isn't the brightest light that we have in our lighting ratio, which is really the key to this, okay, because it creates a kind of moody look. All right. So let's take a look at the step-by-step -step in the hair light process so you can see kind of why I did what I did. Uh, and you're constantly reassessing and judging as you're doing lighting. There, you know, there are lots of recipes out there, but it's always going to be different when you're in the studio. And you really need to, you know, definitely always look at what you're doing and assess as you're going. So I started off on the left, again, way too bright for my liking. Uh, moved to the one in the, the image in the center after knocking it down with some diffusion and ND gel, and then finishing off with two layers of diffusion, uh, two layers of ND gel and one layer of diffusion. And that got me the result that I liked. Okay, and here is our final image with color grading. This color grading was done in Capture One Pro, a great uh, raw converter and one that I encourage you guys to check out if you haven't. You can use it with DSLR or medium format and it really does a wonderful job. So I did my color grading in there and of course I did my retouching and post in Photoshop. All right, here's our lighting diagram so you can see where things were positioned relative to the model and the camera. You can see here that by camera position I've got my Mola Demi Beauty dish with the 30 degree grid spot. Uh, that is giving me my key light and a nice kind of subtle uh, front light. On top of the model, we've got our accent light. The diagram doesn't really let me position the light facing down. So that light, it looks like it's facing the back of the background, but it was it's actually facing down onto the model's hair. That was with a seven inch reflector, which I then modified with diffusion and ND gels, two layers of ND gel, in order to knock it down and give me a nice highlight on the model's hair. As you can see here in the full image, makes a really nice uh, you know, highlight on the hair without being overly aggressive and, you know, getting, you know, calling too much attention to itself. The brightest things in the image, you know, really draw your eye to them. So be aware of that. Camera left and camera right, we have two 14 by 35 Ellen Chrome strip boxes. Those are both uh, at F16 and those are giving us our accent lights. And you can see here that it really creates a sculptural dimensional look uh, that is significantly, uh, I think, better than our one light look, uh, more interesting, uh, more depth, right? All right, and I think I have a behind the scenes here for you guys. Here you can see what things look like in the studio in order to create our final. Again, I've got our two side lights, we've got our key light, and then right tucked behind the key light, you can see the boom stand for the hair light. It's kind of hidden and obscured by the key light, but it's there, you can kind of make it out a little bit. And obviously in the center of all of this is where uh, Nathan, our awesome model, was standing. Um, and next up is our before and after series. So let's take a look. Again, we started with the image that you're seeing on the left. We took it here. Again, this is just one light, but we knocked it down and tightened up our light with a grid spot, a 30 degree grid spot. And then we finished everything off with all four lights together, the key, the two accent lights and the hair light uh, on the right, all right? Um, now I also have a spread. I wanted to show you guys how I like to shoot editorially. Uh, and so I'm always you know, mixing it up and doing some close and some far and some medium, uh, changing background colors and you know, giving myself enough variety that I can put together nice spreads and my client will be happy. So there you go, that is accent lights. I hope that this inspires you guys to try similar stuff. It works great in the studio, works great on location. Accent lights rock. You can see what they do here. I hope that this inspires you to try some of this yourself. And I will see you next month 
here at BehindTheShutter.com. Thanks for tuning in, guys.